Hey, I'm Zach. Welcome to another edition of our Autonomous Driving Future. On this episode, we're going to be talking about what happens with air pollution when cars can drive themselves. Pollution to our environment is one of those concepts that we humans tend to have a lot of trouble quantifying. If the sky is sunny and blue in your little corner of the world, then everything is hunky-dory. Nothing to worry about, right? I mean, this internal combustion engine car has a tailpipe that emits some pretty smelly stuff. But the government has strict regulations, and all that stuff gets swept up into the big clear blue sky, so it's not really a problem anymore, right? Well, not exactly. According to the Union of Concerned Scientists, real-world emission reductions aren't that, well, real. It's true that emission controls are getting better, but see, the problem is that there are just so many of us, driving so many cars. In just the US alone, there are 238 million cars and light trucks on the road. The passenger vehicle fleet is still the largest single source of carbon monoxide and smog-forming pollutants nationwide and the second largest source of hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides. In 2013, transportation contributed more than half of the carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides and almost a quarter of the hydrocarbons emitted into our air. 24 pounds of carbon dioxide are emitted for every gallon of gasoline we use. In the US, 20% of the total global warming emissions today come from cars and light trucks. Okay, but wait, those are all just academic numbers. I mean, People are living longer, so our environment must be getting healthier, right? Coming out of the tailpipe of this car right now are what scientists call PM2.5, or particulate matter that is 2.5 microns in size. To give you some idea, a human hair is about 50 to 70 microns in diameter. These tiny particles are so small, you can only see them with an electron microscope, and your lungs can't filter them out. They literally get stuck in your lungs. Once fine particles are in the lungs, they can affect the lungs, heart, and blood vessels. The effects of this small particle pollution are well documented, and according to the World Health Organization, include respiratory and cardiovascular morbidity, that's death, such as aggravation of asthma, respiratory symptoms, and an increase in hospital admissions. Mortality, that's death, from cardiovascular and respiratory diseases, and from lung cancer. There is no evidence of a safe level of exposure or a threshold below which no adverse health effects occur. So this little patch of dirty filter paper is icky, right? But what does it mean? I mean, how much of this particulate matter is coming out of tailpipes? Surprisingly, this information is hard to come by. So we did a little digging. According to a 1996 study in Los Angeles at the Sepulveda Tunnel, it was found that the average vehicle emits 0.052 grams of PM2.5 per kilometer driven. There you go with those numbers again. What does that even mean? Yeah, I know, right? What does it mean? Well, let's do some math. We know that Americans drive about 4.82 trillion kilometers every year. So that means that in 1996, 251 million kilograms of PM2.5 particles were emitted into the air in the US. Okay, but aren't cars cleaner now? Yeah, good point. So let's say for the sake of argument that cars now emit half as much as they did 20 years ago. So that would be 125 million kilograms of PM2.5 emitted into the air every year, or 0.385 kilograms for every man, woman, and child in the US. And that's just the PM2.5 particles. Here's the PM10 particles. A study conducted for seven years from 2000 to 2007 in the US indicated that the average lifespan was extended by 0.35 years, that's four months, for every 10 micrograms per cubic meter decrease of PM2.5. That's 0.001 grams per cubic meter. Now, we breathe 400,000 cubic meters of air through our lungs per year. So if I breathe in 400 grams of PM2.5 this year, I'll die four months sooner. I'd like to show you what that looks like. So I need something that's about 400 grams. What do I got? Oh, here we go. This bag of 385 grams of PM 2.5 pollution. 
This is my share of all the air pollution that's emitted from U.S. cars every year. Here's some more fun facts about the stuff that comes out of your tailpipe. According to the CDC, air pollution is a leading environmental threat to human health. Recently, the exhaust from diesel engines was classified by the International Agency for Research on Cancer as carcinogenic, group one, to humans. It is estimated that approximately 3% of cardiopulmonary and 5% of lung cancer deaths are attributable to this particulate matter globally. In May of 2017, a study in the journal Nature stated that excess emissions from diesel vehicles exceeding certification limits were associated with about 38,000 premature deaths globally in 2015. Oh yeah, and levels of PM2.5 close to roadsides are often much higher than those in background locations. Don't most people live near roads? Yep, 11% of American households are located within 100 meters of a four-lane highway. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has determined that benzene causes cancer in humans. Long-term exposure to high levels of benzene in the air can cause leukemia, cancer of the blood-forming organs. And I guess benzene comes out of the tailpipe too, huh? That's right. And a 2014 study in the Jordan Journal of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering found that formaldehyde emissions of gasoline mixed with alcohol fuels went up over 22% formaldehyde too? Don't you have any good news? Sure. According to 2009 data from the tracking network, even a 10% reduction in PM2.5 could reduce the number of deaths in this country by 13,000. Okay, that would be great, but you still haven't told us how autonomous cars will reduce pollution. Come over here. I'll show you. You see, self-driving cars are going to be electric with zero tailpipe emissions. And the energy that EVs use in the not-too-distant future will be entirely from clean, renewable sources like wind and solar. That means zero tailpipe emissions and zero power plant pollution. The quicker we get to our autonomous driving future, the sooner we all get to live on a healthier planet. Now you know.